Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is The Lineup. Tuesday? As far as I know. Your house? Yeah. Now, look, uh, this time, let's settle on a limit and stick to it, huh? Yeah, it starts getting out of hand. It sure know. does, and it's that stupid partner of yours, that stupid Irish luck. <laughs> he gets real courageous when he wins a few bucks. Diamond Jim Grab. You think he's been taking grab? No, don't kid him. No, let's stay away from some of those wild things he gets on. Low ball with Jack Swild. Oh, uh, what is that, really? Oh, oh, now, come on. Oh, well, it's almost that bad. He had something wild and low. Ball. Oh, he didn't play it. He was just kidding. With my money, he was kidding. <laughs> May I have your attention, please? Yeah, well, you people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room. Yeah. May I have your attention, please? Okay, I'll see you later. Good night. Thank you. My name is Greb. Sergeant Matt Greb, I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. When the prisoners leave here, they are sent to the washroom and dressed back into their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Okay, bring on the line. All right, boys, come on, keep it moving. Right over here to the end of the stage. Now turn and face front. Hands to your sides. Look straight ahead. When I call your name and number, step out and talk up. It's a big room, so let the people in the back hear you. All right, number one, Jules Simpson, robbery. You always wear glasses, Jules? Well, no, not always. Uh, I go to bed at night. I don't wear them, man. <laughs> well, that's real bright of you. Take them off. Well, I can't see. You could see pretty good the night of the 23rd. Night of the 23rd? Well, I had the glasses on then all night. Take them off. Okay. Don't look at me. Look at the audience. Well, I can't look at nothing. I can't see. Pretend you can. Face front. <clears throat> okay. Where do you live? Uh, 446 North River Street. Well, is that a house, a hotel, or what? Or what? What? Well, it's supposed to be a hotel, but I just wouldn't swear to that. It's been called a lot of things. Where do you work? Well, I ain't been. For how long? Well, a year, maybe. How do you pay your rent? Who says I did? The manager of the hotel. He says you paid your rent. Well, not regular, I mean. Well, he says that, too, but he says you paid it. Well, I've been getting compensation. From what? Well, I worked a year ago. Oh, I had lots of jobs. I made enough to get a social security number. 5328, 757. What kind of a car were you driving when you were picked up? Well, it was a Buick, you see, man. What color? Well, I just don't remember that. Where'd you get it? Well, I borrowed it. Who'd you borrow it from? Well, I just don't remember that. Yeah. Your memory's weaker than your eyes. Well, I guess it is. Have any weapons on you? Oh, no, no. The arresting officer found a 32 automatic in the glove compartment. Well, it's not my Oh, the guy who owned the car. He must have put it there. I'm clean on that hat. Okay, step back. Oh, well, can I put my glasses on? Put them on. Oh, yes, a guy could break a leg up here. He sure could. Now, step back. 
Okay, number two, John Stillman. Where do you live, John? East side. Chalk up. East side. Can you people hear him out there? Well, I told you when you walked out here to talk up. Now, come on, do it. You scare me. East side. I don't want to scare you, John. Just tell the people what you do. I'm not working. Did you ever? Well, sure, sometimes when I was a kid. Not much future in it. You arrested with anybody? Oh, just Bob and Trav. Bob and Travis Stillman, number three and four. Any weapons? 38 Cole Automatic, 38 Smith & Wesson revolver, two rifles, one single shot, and a 30-30. Going hunting? That's a funny remark. Hold your head up. Sure. Take your hands out of your pockets. Okay, okay. Now. Now, where do you live? I told you. Where on the east side? 78, 108th Street. Step back. There you father. What? Nothing. Number three, Travis Stillman. Come on, Trav. Come on, come on. Move it. I'm tired. Yeah, you look it. Where do you live? Same place as John. 78, 108th Street. That's it. Bob don't live with us, though. He's married. I'll ask Bob. Okay. Tell the people when you were arrested. In where you were arrested? In the alley. In an alley where? Uh, I was in a crate. A uh, packing crate. What were you doing in there? Trying to keep from being arrested. <laughs> what are you wearing? Uh, yeah, oh, so they are. John. Okay. Well, John isn't working anywhere. That's what I mean. How old are you? I actually got a call from Mr. Ralph Fisher, manager of the Parkway Hotel in Lexington. How much, eh? Yeah. Found the body of one of his tenants stuffed in a trunk in the basement. <laughs> Examination, I'd say she'd been dead about a week. In the trunk? Yeah, looks like strangulation. It's a little hard to tell right now, but I'll do an autopsy as soon as we get her downtown. Okay, I'll see you down there. All right. Okay, boys, clear it up. Where's your manager? In his room. His name's Fisher. Let's go talk to him. We haven't had one in the trunk in a long time. Any identification? One of the tenants. Fisher said her name was Breen. Look at her husband. Where's the husband? This way. Can't locate the husband. They left in 311, but the husband hasn't shown up. Fisher says he hasn't seen him for about a week. This is it. The woman's been dead about a week. You got somebody looking over 311? Yeah, Carger's up there. We talked with Fisher, saw the body, and Carger went up to... Oh, what's that? Come in. Oh, uh, Mr. Fisher, this is, uh, John Guthrie. How do you do? Hi, Mr. Fisher. Sit down. Sit down, please. Thank you. I understand the woman was one of your tenants. Yes. Uh, can I get you something? Some coffee or something? No, no, no thank you. Me, thanks. It's turning cold out. I put some coffee on the boil. Yes, uh, the woman is Mrs. Green. She lives... Uh, maybe I should say lived in 311. With her husband? Uh, Mr. Green, yes. He hasn't been around for about a week. I'll bet he did it. Uh, with both of them gone for a week, didn't you miss him? When Green left, he said he and his wife were planning a short trip. I didn't think anything until I opened that trunk. Boy, that was the most awful thing I've ever seen. I'll think about that the rest of my life. Did the Greens argue much? Not too much. They had a couple of good ones, but who don't? Wait till my wife gets home. She never did like Green. Told me I should get rid of them. Why'd she want that? She didn't like them. Green told her to mind her business one day, and she didn't like him after that. Not much reason, though. She knew and me, I wish more people would tell my wife to mind her business. Uh, what do you know about the Greens? Uh, where'd they come from? Well, they told me Kansas City. Missouri? Missouri? Oh, yeah, there's a Kansas City. Kansas, isn't there? No, they didn't tell me which, just Kansas City. Hmm. And what was his first name? Joe. Hers was Louise. What day did he leave? Um, six days, uh, about uh, Tuesday, I think. 
Try to make sure. Well, I'm pretty sure it was Tuesday. Mm. How long have they left here? About three months. What did Joe Green do? Oh, I don't know. He paid his rent. I never asked him what he did. We weren't very friendly. Didn't go out much. We want a good description. Oh, I can give you that. You know, I never thought I'd get mixed up in nothing like this. You read about things like this, but you never think you're going to get mixed up in them. Oh, the coffee. It's boiling over. Excuse me. Sure. What do you think, Ben? Uh, I don't know. Her husband? Sure looks like it. If it isn't, he better have a good story. Somebody killed a woman and stuffed her in a trunk. Yeah, I heard. Everybody's making coffee. I was getting tired. You want some? Yeah, I'll take a cup. Any uh, suspects? My husband. He disappeared about the same time the woman was killed. Manager gave us a pretty good description. The lab boys got some clear prints from the room. Running a check on him now. Strong, isn't it? Well, it probably is. I didn't measure. Got any identifications on the Stillman boys? Six. Oh, great. Had a little trouble, too. You missed a good show. Trap Stillman got sore at his kid brother. We nearly had a family fight on the stage. Oh, you made better coffee. <clears throat> yeah. Bob Stillman's close. I think maybe he's going to tell us all about it. You need me? He likes you. Okay, we'll be down. Can I come? Yeah. Hey, maybe you should bring some of that coffee. Huh? You could give it to Stillman. One swallow of that stuff and you confess to anything. You're sure getting grouchy in your old age. And you'd think after being married 11 years, you'd at least have learned how to make a good cup of coffee. Molly's neglected my education. Oh, now, don't blame your faults on that, sweet little girl. Ah, uh, you're prejudiced because you teach. <laughs> Say, uh, what about the woman in the trunk? How long? Well, Dave says about a week. He's doing an autopsy now. I hope the lab comes up with something on those prints. Where'd you go then? To a bar. What bar? Oh, hello, Ben. Hi. I'm tired. Let me get some sleep. Hello, Bob. Hello. You're tired, eh, Bob? Who's that? Guthrie. Oh. I'm real tired, Lieutenant. Can't I rest for a while? You know, my case, Bob. I have to ask Quine. I've been asking him for the last hour. He won't tell me who else was in on the apprentice job. Oh, you know who else was in on it. Work on Trav and John. Mm. They're just blaming on Bob here. Hey, you nuts. You're just trying to work us. Look, Bob, six witnesses identified the three of you. For Pete's sake, lay off. I don't care if six dozen people identified us. I'm just tired. Bob. Yeah? Ben. Yeah, what is it? Sorry, but it's important. Oh, look, okay. Bob. If you're smart and you're acting that way, you better... We uh, got a report on those prints from Green's room. You know who Green is? Benny Kirk. Oh, really? Got an FBI kickback on him. They're really interested. Well, they should be. They rate Kirk number one. I'd like to have him. Well, who wouldn't? What about the woman? His wife, all right. They were married in Covington, Kentucky in 1938. She's got a minor record. Got an APB? A few minutes ago. Well, wait for me. I'll be right out. Don't believe a word of what you say, Bob. We know what you were doing. Then why keep asking? I've got to work on this 411 coin. I won't be able to stick around. Okay, Bob. Now, look, Bob. Take my advice. You're going to save yourself a lot of trouble if you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know Benny Kirk, Bob? I heard of him. Who hasn't? Yeah. He's the number one boy in your world. He just did a sloppy job of killing his wife. Kirk? Yeah, kickback. He stuffed her in the trunk and skipped. So what's that got to do with me? You're 28, aren't you? That's right. When Kirk was 28, he was probably a lot like you. About the same record. He's only around 33 now. Hey, look, what's this all about? Think about it, Bob. Now he's killed somebody. And I'll lay you eight to five, he's dead inside of a year. <laughs> if you catch him. We will. Think about it. Come on, man. <laughs>
about time I won one. Get a load of the stack. What are you going to do when you can't see over them, man? Look around the corner. <laughs> okay, base is high. Uh, nickel. Uh, here, Matt, uh, give me five whites. Five? Uh, four. <laughs> That's the way he wins. <laughs> wins? <laughs> you ready for him? Oh, come on, come on. Throw one in. Okay, okay. Uh, six. Eight. A pair. Jack, bet him. Little three. It's about time. Ace. Two bits. Climbing. You in, Klein? Uh, no. Everybody in? Run them. Three. Seven. Possible straight. Hmm. Ace. Yeah. Oh, again. Oh, come on, come on, come on. You've seen aces before. Yeah, all night. Well, you're not in. What are you beefing about? I'm beefing, too. Yeah? Two bits. Everybody? It's getting to be a matter of pride. Well, if you're so proud, why don't you raise me? Sit down. Oh, proud. Not stupid. Come on, run them. Everybody then? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Fine. Okay. Yeah. Three. Fair. Yeah. Nine. Still possible. Yeah. Four. And a king. Okay. Fair. I was fugitive. What? Authorities in West Virginia are holding Benny Kirk. They got him? They're sending him up. He'll be on tomorrow's train. Hey, that's a feather in our cap. We get the prosecute. I'm betting a half. Any confession? No, they didn't say. Come on, come on, come on. A half, a half. You're sure proud of those two aces. They're worth a half. I'm out. Well, how about you, Dave? Oh, raise your half. That's going. Dave beat his brains out. Anybody want some beer? Yeah. yeah. How about you, Clint? Huh? Yeah, I'll have Pay your money okay. if you want to look. Anybody else? Uh, yeah, I'll have one, Ben. Uh, let me see. You're 50 and 50 more. Oh, no. You think you're going to make us believe? I'm not you... trying to make you numbheads believe anything. <laughs> He's bluffing. Well? Well, what? Okay, if I take my time? He's bluffing. Well, why don't you call him? Oh, you, you, you got to call him. No. What are you out of your mind? Ah, thank you, boys. Thank you. Did you have him? He didn't call. Come on, let's see your whole thing. Ah, uh, no, no, no. You mustn't speak. No, no. He was bluffing. Okay. Deal me in. Uh, Will you look at that stack? <laughs> All right. Now, uh, this is going to be low ball. Anything wild? Hmm. One eye Jack. I know it. <laughs> What's the matter with Jacks? It's nearly three. Yeah. Now here comes the station agent. He's coming in the yard now. Oh, thanks. Uh, you can go down this way. late in the air. Good football weather. Oh, this ramp. You, um, picking up anybody special? Benny Kirk. Hmm, Benny Kirk. That's special. Who got him? A rookie in Elkins, West Virginia. <laughs> Doesn't it figure? Guy like Kirk beats the best of them for years and he gets careless and a rookie picks him up. What car? I want to... Hey, what's that? I don't know. It's the conductor. Hey, 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 police. Ben. Yeah. Uh, hey, hey. Yeah, what's wrong? Shoot him. The officer who was with Kirk is hurt. Kirk got away. Jumped off the train about 100 yards back. With the officer's come. Now, uh, where's the officer? Uh, in this coach, right here in B. He needs a doubt. Well, I'll give one. Right. Say, Kirk jumped. Uh-huh. About 100 yards back. He was hurt, too. He must have had uh, Matt, put out a call. Surround the yards. Right, Ben. Can I do something? Yeah. Go stay with the officer. You going after Kirk? Yeah. Shoot. I work here. Don't shoot. You. 
You're looking for some guy. Who slugged you? Some guy. You're looking for him. Tall guy. Had two guns. I'm looking for him. I'm a police officer. You better sit down. Uh, yeah. Oh, he sure belted me. Look at all that blood. Now, which way did he go? Into the roundhouse over there. He was hurt. I just ran into him, and he slugged me when I asked him what he was doing. Okay, you you better take it easy now. I've got to get to a doctor. I'm getting dizzy. There'll be some men along in a minute. I've got to get to a doctor right away. I, I haven't felt it good, but never this good. Maybe i got a fracture. Well, you take it easy. I've got to get in that roundhouse. Now watch yourself. He's hurt, and he's mean. I'm just lucky he didn't shoot me. Okay, you take it easy. Uh, yeah. You better take it easy, too. He's got two guns. Between. Yeah, and he likes it. He's hurt and he wants to shoot it out. There. Keep your head down. Yeah. What is it? Where is he? On the other side. If you come over, do it on your face. Ben. Yeah. Couldn't, uh, couldn't somebody get down that side? Well, how? Keep him busy. He says he's behind three feet of concrete. It's your guess. Get it. Uh, Why? Yeah, man. Bring a gas gun. Right. 
Bring a couple. Kirk, come on out with your hands up, or we'll gas you out. Well, I guess he, he's not worried about it. Yeah, here, here they come. Have you got them spotted? No. It's over there someplace. That's a big area. We got six shells, and then start dropping them over there. All right. Four bits, I find it. You got a bet. I'll take that side from the center track. Okay. Kirk! I'll give you one more chance. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Give it to him. The innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you the lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb. Sergeant Matt Greb, I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name is charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the president of that conversation. The lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Greb is written by Blake Edwards with music composed and conducted by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were High Everback, Howard McNear, Peter Leeds, Clayton Post, Dave Young, Sidney Miller, and Herb Butterfield. The lineup is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. (laughs) 